Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirbygato. Welcome to today. Oh my goodness, I am trying to stay warm. As you join in, be super hopeful and expectant. It's walking with wisdom and walking in the warmth of the word. Amen. So as you join in, oh my goodness, if you're in an area that's cold, this broadcast is going to bless you because it's going to warm your heart. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh my goodness. Holy Spirit has just so blessed my heart as God is revealing so much with his word coming into my heart going in between my intents and motives and see this is what the awesome thing is when god shows you your motives he shows you what is behind your motives it's not just oh good morning lottie god bless you it's not just you know the enemy wants us to think oh you're bad that's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil good and bad and so the enemy will try to bring condemnation to make you feel like something's wrong with you, but that is not how the Father is. The Father shows you your intent. He shows you your motives, and He shows you what's driving that. And that is called, with coaching that I do with my different clients, it is called focused attunement. We need a tune up. You know when your car needs to be re-spark plugged and have a tune-up and those basic things that come with a tune-up. One of the things that come with a tune-up is spark plugs. And without spark plugs, you're not going to get your engine cranked. They create the spark, the fire. And this is interesting because focused attunement which is what I do with my clients, what is focused attunement, where when they're talking and sharing the issues of their heart, and my job as by the Lord is to look for those patterns. And in those patterns, God just kind of removes the veil and shows me the issue of what's driving that perception and that behavior. Now think about spark plugs on a car. Oh my goodness, I know this. I've got a 1980 Jeep and I specifically wanted a 1980 Jeep because it's probably the most minimal work on a vehicle if I wanted to, and eventually I do, want to learn about mechanics and about mechanical issues in a vehicle, okay? And so one of my favorite things I've always wanted was a Jeep, but not a new Jeep. I wanted a vintage Jeep, and now my Jeep is vintage. I got it in 2015, October 2015, and so it wasn't vintage when I first got it, but it is vintage now. Well, one of the things that was happening with my Jeep, and it was so funny, okay? Because we live in downtown Birmingham. This is so funny. I've just got to stop a minute because y'all are going to laugh. We live in downtown Birmingham. And so for a while there, my Jeep was backfiring, okay? Now we live in the downtown area that's south side, which is right beside University of Alabama, Birmingham, the whole medical campus, medical hospital. It's Birmingham is known for their medical giftings, their medical, uh, their hospitals, and all the specialized surgical slash medical services that Birmingham provides. And so we've got a ton of hospitals, and UAB is the University of Alabama at Birmingham. It is the medical hospital of Alabama, pretty much, learning institute, and so we have People fly in from all over the world to get training or to do trainings here. And we live pretty much right beside that campus in downtown Birmingham, which is downtown Birmingham. And so Southside's kind of a little historic and has cute restaurants, shops, 
and is just traversed by not only the medical community, students, doctors, and I actually worked on Southside two different times in my life while in Birmingham. I worked in outpatient psychotherapy, which is called the Bird Building, and it's on 20th Street. It's right there on Southside. And then I also worked in the Alzheimer's department of UAB as well, and the outpatient psych department was UAB, and Alzheimer's unit was UAB. And so I've worked at UAB a couple of times, many years ago in the 90s, and I used to walk to restaurants. I also used to walk up and downtown for a few miles. But let me tell you what, this old Jeep, when we moved to downtown Birmingham, it was backfiring, okay? And it literally sounds like gunshots, okay? And what's so funny is we have a couple of police departments right here. We live right beside a fire department. But we also have a police department just a few blocks away. And backfire today is going to be areas of trauma in your past that are trying to misfire in your present, okay? And so that Jeep, it began to backfire. And the police came. And of course, I couldn't start it and it ended up just stopping on me and this was probably 2016 2016 and the police came because the police was trying to check it out i think they thought somebody is firing a gun <laughs> you know and they were like what's going on because it was right around the corner from the police department where my jeep was backfiring and so we pulled over and the first thing that the policeman looked at was my spark plugs, okay? Because if your spark plugs are not charging right, sparking, which for us is the word of truth, it is eternal life, it is revival, it's the new anointing. Understand that eternal life is Jesus himself. It is his very life that was authored when he was in the body. At that moment, of his crucifixion and resurrection and that life taken to the cross, which ascended on high, that was the author creation of eternal life. It is Jesus's life. And so Jesus's life is in us. Okay. And that life is the spark. It is the flame. It is the fire that keeps us moving and it doesn't allow us to go into our past. It pushes us past our past, past our past, okay? That's what we want to do. Well, backfiring for us indicates areas of your past where you haven't, where you need to change that spark plug. What does that mean? You need to get a fire in your members and focus on Jesus Christ, focus on that eternal life and be revived in it and let go Remember, forgive means to let go, to release. Let go of your past. There are many opportunities where Satan will try to send a messenger to buffet your flesh, to get you to think about things of your past. And it's those moments that you just need to put everything under submission unto Christ Jesus. That's 2 Corinthians 10, where we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we're wrestling against lofty arguments, backfirings that exalt themselves against the name of Jesus. But we are to take our thoughts captive and bring them into obedience under submission of Christ Jesus. That is what our job is to do, is to keep the spark alive, okay? By taking our thoughts captive. And so, interestingly enough, there are a couple things wrong with the car, but one of the things that I had to do was get a tune up. Now, remember, I'm talking about a counseling slash coaching therapeutic term, attunement, which is what I do with my clients that I coach. Focused attunement. So in my coaching sessions, and some of y'all are on here, I see Margaret's on here. She's the one that I coach. I coach a few people that get on my Facebook Lives and those focused attunements, I am 
helping them look at those spark plugs that are old to show them what's motivating their perception, their behavior, just like God has done with me. So in this fast, God has me doing re further research with another book. Like I've already read five or six books by now for my new book, The Forbidden Fruit, that God has me writing. So, the, you know, now my books as of late, the newer ones, have been called a thesis. And so The Forbidden Fruit, The Spiritual Disease is an open thesis, just like mindfulness the mind of Christ was my thesis to God. And of course, it's going to be more intellectual because that's just the gift God's given me. Okay. I can't help it. And if you're having trouble <laughs> because my books are so intellectual, contact me, message me, and I will get you videos or whatever it is necessary to help you navigate those books. Well, in this fast, God has been doing focused attunement focused attunement with me where he is removing the veil to show me areas, especially lately. And I know it's the Holy Spirit guiding me because the Holy Spirit led me to do more reading and research on post-traumatic stress disorder. Although I was a psychotherapist in the nineties and even some in the two thousands and did psychotherapy and worked with people, most of my clients had PTSD. Most of my, I'd say about 70% of my clients had PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. And that's a chronic stress state that continues after an, a traumatic event. Post-traumatic stress, where it's a chronic stress where you are triggered pretty easily. And so one of the gifts God's given me just because of my own life is helping people that have gone through traumatic events to navigate it and to get healing and deliverance from those traumas so that they can have peace and shalom be made whole shalom means restore restoration restitution being made whole that's what shalom means peace well get this because this is so amazing let me just stop here so as I have been doing more research on um, post-traumatic stress disorder, oh my goodness, God has blessed me beyond measure. <laughs> and I'll give you some indication and y'all can so relate. And I just love being real because it's more important for me to be real to help one person and to bring shalom, understanding, knowledge and wisdom by the Father, by God, so that you can have peace, amen. And one of the things that you're really gonna see, especially in the, God, the forbidden fruit, the spiritual disease, that's all about eternal life, it is about that spark. You plug in to that spark that's in you of eternal life. You plug into it, okay? Just like there are two fires, one that you're feeding at any moment, I've mentioned eternal life, Song of Solomon 8, 6, and 7, a seal upon my arm, a fiery seal upon my heart that many waters cannot quench. It's stronger than hell, crueler than the grave. That is eternal life. That Song of Solomon scripture is a metaphor for eternal life. This eternal life in us is the fire that we feed by focusing our attention on that and not being distracted from it but tending and guarding it. Just like Adam was called to tend and guard the Garden of Eden. That's our Eden. That's our delight. Eden means delight. That's our delight is eternal life in us. And so there have been so many times in the past and God showed me, oh my goodness, he's been giving me so much revelation in this past for this new book and for myself. You know, I am my own guinea pig as well as my family. And I get to benefit that, the benefits of that, also with my clients that I coach. I, I'm just kind of like that professor where if you're a professor at a university, part of your job is to write articles, to publish books. You just don't sit there and just grade students and teach. No, part of 
being a professor at a university is showing the university's credibility by publishing different research, articles, books, whatever. That's what I kind of feel like. I feel like, okay, I'm that research professor where I've got my clients, I'm teaching, I'm doing research, and I'm writing. I'm publishing, okay? That's what I'm doing for the Lord. And so in this process, in years past, I felt like, and I would say, because God would bring Jeremiah 30 and also Job, where it talks about the incurable wound. And I would just ache. And it was like there was something wrong with me and I couldn't figure it out. And I would feel like, am I ever going to get over whatever this is? And I really couldn't put words to it because it was just areas of uh, chaos, torment in my life. And it wasn't because I had unforgiveness. It was just past trauma that was continuing to spark backfire in my life, just like that Jeep would backfire those old spark plugs. The other fire that we can feed is that fire, the tongue of Gehenna, the message of the enemy. And that's the negative, that's the untruce, the unlovely. And so God began to show me, as I've been doing this fast, studying post-traumatic stress disorder again, and Holy Spirit has been coming into my heart. God said, Robin, do you know what the incurable wound is? And I went, what? He said, it's post-traumatic stress disorder. People are still living in that trauma of captivity. That's what was going on with Jeremiah's time when he would talk about the incurable wound. And with Job, when he talked about the incurable wound, it was the trauma of all he had gone through, okay? And it just, I was just like blown away. I'm like, God, that makes sense. And the Lord said, Robin, you know those times in your life that you felt, you know, just exasperated and would say to me, when am I, when am I going to be over this incurable wound? He said, what you were going through was the process of overcoming trauma. And I was like, oh my goodness. And then on different occasions, the enemy would come at me and just, you know, flog me, condemn me. Oh, you're so bad because you, you haven't got healed of this. You haven't got free of this. You still have this issue. And you know, I could never figure out what is wrong with me. Y'all, I'm just being real, okay? I'm just being real. And of course, it's more amplified in my eyes because it's me than it is in my husband's eyes because, you know, it's me and I see from my perception. And God showed me, God showed me over the past couple of days. He said, Robin, <laughs> what is wrong with you is you're still reliving trauma. And it's being expressed in different avenues of your life. And these places that you are having issue are actually triggers of the trauma. And I was like, God, that is good news. That is great news because I'm not this person that needs, you know, inpatient psychiatry that's having a nervous breakdown. I'm not this person that is such a bad person where the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is trying to make me feel bad. No, 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 no. Anytime you feel bad, stop for that very moment. Acknowledge what tree it's, you're eating from and stop it and say, I am not bad in Jesus' name. That is not me and I choose to eat of life. When you feel bad, you need to change those spark plugs you need to feed the flame of eternal life and you need to get that spark back of life and life abundantly. And so watch this, this is so amazing. As God has been taking me through this PTSD and doing more research, he has just given me so much understanding that has blessed me 
of being aware, mindful, conscious of the fact that it was the trauma, my past trauma, the past wounds, speaking in my present, misfiring to backfire in my life. And God gave me such shalom, peace to know, oh my goodness, I'm not crazy. I'm all right. I'm going to be okay. And it's like I was on the surgical table of the great physician and he was just pouring the healing balm of Gilead, feeling those fragmented places, those traumatic places, feeling it with his love and his oil of grace, mercy, and truth, and just covering me and just letting me know, look, Robin, this is freedom. And that awareness, that knowledge, that understanding, whew, it brought me freedom. So I pray and I'm excited about what God's going to bring in this book. And it's really going to be one of my passions in 2023, as well as moving forward. One of my passions is really going to help people with post-traumatic stress disorder, with traumas, with stress from that prior trauma in their life to walk in freedom. So you don't have to feel like a walking wound. You're not a walking wound. It's just past trauma. God wants to bless you today to say, you know what? He's your healer. He's your deliverer. He will free you from the voice of the enemy, of that trauma that continues to speak in your life. Just like that yelping dog. You hear it? There it is. There's that wound. Uh-uh. No more. When I walk by this park, that yelping doesn't bother me. Why? Because it's not in me. And I can just walk away. If I don't want to hear it, it's not bothering me right now. But if I don't want to hear it, I can just walk away. I don't have to stand there and go to the dog, the yelping dog, and stand at him and let him keep yelping. No, that's not my dog. That's not my dog. Is that not funny? That is not my dog. Yup, yup, yup. And it's funny because Caleb that went to take the promised land with Joshua, I've taught on him with physics and quarks and quarks came from bark. That's where the name quark came from bark. It was by a poet that put it in a poem and Caleb means yelper. Oh yeah, when you take down those giants, those dogs, Yep, 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 yep. They yelp. They yelp. They run in fear. You know what? Your past trauma is just a yelping dog. But you know what? It's not your dog. Bye bye. Okay. I love you. Be blessed. Have an amazing weekend. And be at peace. You're going to get over trauma. And you're A-OK. -okay, and you're going to get your fire back. The eternal life that's in you is going to burn brightly and things in your life are not going to backfire. Your past is not going to backfire on you anymore. In Jesus name, God bless you. I love you.